So, you got your S-Rank selector, but now you don't know who to pick. Well, we're gonna help you with that decision. We're gonna go through all the possible options and all the things you might wanna consider when picking your S-Rank. There's a lot to cover here and a lot of information to take in. So let's try and simplify this and make this quick so you can get back to playing. So most likely, like everyone else, you've invested a bit into Lotus. Lotus is a good choice until the mid game where her damage falls off heavily. There are lots of characters that are really fun to play like Lotus where their damage falls off heavily sadly, such as Wanshi or Vera. The reason for this is that if you come into details, you will see that they are not naturally an S rank. If you'd like to see an example of that, here we have SS plus Lotus with battle power of 7850, and here we have SS plus A2 with a battle power of 8000. Now, you might think that these are very close to being the same strength. However, battle power is a lie, and it is completely incorrect to assume that. Here's the trap that a lot of people fall into. I'll give you a demonstration. We're gonna compare Lotus and how much damage she can do to A2. And then just to exaggerate the point, we're gonna do a couple of normal characters, maybe Vera or New Fire Live. So you can really understand just how OP natural S ranks really are. Now, something else I want you to all keep in mind. Not all S ranks are created equally. Chrome and Vera, for example, our top tier S ranks. This is talking strictly meta by the way, and some characters are basically throwaway S ranks. So we have Karenino, and we have Kamui, and we have Liv. Liv may be changing in the future, but we'll see in a few months with some updated patches. We also have Lee, who's not fantastic, but again, these characters are much better than any A or B rank character. It's just, in terms of S rank meta, everyone still has a different level of usefulness depending on their damage output. What you'll normally find is that a lot of team compositions have a leader, which is the strong S rank that does a lot of damage, followed by two helpers who usually just sit in the background because they don't do enough damage, so their whole purpose is just to boost the damage of the useful one. The problem with this is that if you get hit, or if the game gives you a scuffed hit, or maybe you dodge, but it counts as a hit anyway. Probably the main S rank will die, and then you're stuck doing the whole stage over because of the lack of damage output from the other two characters. So unless it's very specific endgame content where I'm forced to use all of the teams and I don't have room to negotiate with who I'm using, what you'll probably see me do is use three S rank characters. Maybe I'll put Plume, or Chrome here instead of Liv. Why? Because S ranks will always beat A and B ranks. Let me show you a demonstration. Personally, I play this game for fun, so I like things to be balanced. I really enjoyed playing Lotus as it was fun. However, when she does no damage, it's like her kit isn't working, therefore it's no longer fun. Most of the time I won't play Lotus for endgame content. There are ways to make characters viable, and you can make up for it with skill. However, at the end of the day, you're still punishing yourself by making the game harder for no reason. I've done a video proving very much that Lotus can be a viable choice, but it depends on the game mode, what you're playing, and what you're trying to achieve. You can check out this video down below, where I've proven that Lotus can get top tier scores in Pain Cage, if you'd like me to make a video on how I achieved this and the mechanics behind the game that allowed Lotus to become that strong, let me know, and I'll make a video if there's enough demand for it. Now our test dummy for the day is going to be Roseblade. If you don't want to see the damage difference, feel free to skip this part, but for those who do, I'm going to show you proper evidence on how the damage differs between natural S ranks and non S ranks. First up we'll use Lotus, so you can see just how strong a 7.8k battle power character apparently is. Take note of the time and the amount of damage I'm doing. Now 
Right. 30 seconds, and we have 18 bars of health. Let's move on. This time we'll be testing A2. Here you'll be able to see the difference almost immediately. And as you can see, the boss is dead before we even hit the 30 second mark. Now let's try someone a little bit weaker. Let's try Vera, who is a 6700 BP, just over a thousand less BP than Lotus. <laughs> And as you can see, Roseblade has a lot less than 18 HP at the 30 second mark. Vera certainly out damages Bianca, so let's give Bianca a go and see how she does. Roseblade is also weak to fire damage, so technically Lotus had a bit of an advantage at this stage as well. Let's try one more character out, who I know everyone likes to closely compare. As you can see by this example, not all S ranks are treated equally. Alpha is sadly one of the weaker S ranks right now, and as you can see, she has way more BP than Vero. How on earth does BP measure then? Especially since a construct with the element buff and 7800 BP can get out damaged by a construct with 6400 BP and no element buff. Well, the main reason for this is the S rank system. You can level up your character to double, triple, and triple S plus. If it is a natural S rank character, the only way to level them up to double S for free is to go into Pain Cage. You can go into this right here. Then you'll come up here, shop, and you'll buy the shards required once you've already unlocked the construct. You'll only get so many, and you'll need to pick and choose who you level up. Now, some people think that the main thing you hope to achieve from this is getting little stat boosts here, and of course, unlocking the whale skills that do extra damage. This is incorrect. Whilst these are certainly helpful, the main thing that you will get from this is when you click level up, the difference between a double S and a triple S is actually the stat boost. All of your stat modifiers will change and you will notice a huge difference. 
the difference between Triple S and Triple S Plus is absolutely huge. If you've ever seen anyone play with a whale character, you'll notice them always complaining how the game's too easy. That's because there's a lack of balance there and it's no longer fun for them. I've experienced this myself on the beta, as I'm an official content creator for PGR, so I've been lucky enough to try out the beta and try out whale characters. Whilst the game is a lot easier, it's also a lot more boring, because as soon as you get your kit ready and you're about to use your whole character's core passive or their ultimate and you really get into the stage, the stage ends because you've done too much damage. Now if you want my opinion on who to pick based on playing them as whale characters, my opinion would be Vera is a good choice and also Chrome, assuming that you're leveling them up fully. But again, it goes back to that stat boost. Whilst SS Chrome may get one shot, SSS or SSS Plus Chrome may very well survive two or three hits. So it really depends on how much you're going to level up the character and the stat bonus they get from SSS Plus. Now back to the A rank and B rank characters. You'll notice this Lotus here is SSS Plus. Now this was my attempt to make her as viable as possible. Also I just wanted one SSS Plus character on the account and I didn't think that A2 was going to work at the time. Now the difference with these characters is that this can be obtained for free. You can actually grind out each character's shards in their interlude as long as they're a natural B or an A rank character. Unfortunately, because this is free, the amount of power that comes with that is not equivalent to the natural S rank characters. Now does this mean that you shouldn't play these characters? No. Again, I play for fun. If you're enjoying these characters, continue to play them. Why wouldn't you? However, if you're just into melding endgame content and you just want to know the meta so you can pass the stages as easily as possible, then you want to pick natural S ranks. Unfortunately, A2 isn't available anymore, as I know a lot of people would love to have near team. Since A2 is no longer available, and I can't recommend that you get her, these would be my other recommendations based on what you can currently get. This is just my personal experience with the S-Rank characters, take it with a grain of salt. This is my experience based off playing my normal account, which is a Light Dolphin account, and being able to compare it to Beta, which is Ultra Leviathan Whale account. First up we have Liv, who is super useful and is currently meta for Fireteam. Next we have Vera, who is also super useful and definitely meta. Chrome is another solid choice. And Luna, who whilst Luna does a lot of damage, she can also get one shot very easily in endgame modes, making her quite frustrating to use. Next we have Rosetta, who is supposed to be getting a buff, but is generally strong enough to stand up on her own. Following that we have Alpha, whilst an amazing character at launch, has since been power crept quite a bit and is rather average at the moment. Next up we have Nanami, who just came out. I don't personally like Nanami, but she's an average for an S rank. Not a bad character, she just takes getting used to due to the fact that she has a giant mech with a huge hitbox, and if you've watched my guide, you know how her blue and yellow orb work, meaning that you have a lot of dodge that you're missing out on. And of course, near team can dash like she can for free, making her technically a bad unit. This is my opinion based on what I've experienced. Selena is certainly a decent choice. She's not particularly strong at anything, but she does everything in general relatively well. Next we have Plume, who is kind of an essential ice rank meta at the moment. I would in general rate her as average, but she is very useful for meta. Bianca was really good, but has since been power crept by Vera. She's still much better than having Dawn on your team, but for the moment she's one of the lower rank damage dealing S ranks. Nanami throw in the bin. Karen throw in the bin, and Kamui is only there to support Luna. Liv is not very good, however her heals can be quite nice if you're playing Alpha, who again, both of which are a bit dated and power crept. However, Liv is supposed to be getting a buff and will be meta soon with one of the new characters that is coming out. As for Lee, he's kind of in the same situation as Alpha, where he's not bad but he's not good and he has been power crept. Onto the uniframes, Kamui is a god, he doesn't even have his 6 star weapon, and he just stomps on everything in Babel. Next up is Pulau. She's fine, but I don't like to use her because her damage is rather low. Next is Chu. Same situation as Pulau, and I would probably rank her the worst out of all the Transcendents. Sorry, Uniframes. Second in my opinion is Selena. 
after Kamu with the best damage, and she has AoE damage, which is super useful for certain endgame stages. And last of all, we have Ronald, who if is up against a boss that can be stunned, is ultra useful. His damage can range from good to mediocre, depending on what you're fighting. So this should all give you an idea, especially if you've joined us since the PC client release and you have a new account, on who you should aim to level up and who you might like to pull for just based on fun or meta. Now, you'll still get to use lots of different characters. For example, one of the events right now, if you click here and then you come into members, you'll see that we have Alpha, Watanabe, really old Nanami, and a few other characters that you wouldn't usually use. These character stats will only last in this event and they're not at all tied to your account. That does mean that you get to use characters that you may enjoy. Never get to use Watanabe because he's not meta? Well, now you can. Now, as for endgame modes such as Norman, Basically, the more you have, the better, and the more powerful your constructs are, the better. That's as simple as it is. Every little bit of advantage you can get in these endgame modes matters, including who's meta. As you can see, I have plenty of constructs to choose from, since I have them all unlocked, so I was able to put A2 instead of Live. I don't need a healer if everything's dead. Usually, due to the characters that we have right now, the meta is going to be two A ranks, or one A rank and an S rank, and an S rank character who's doing all the damage. I like to get away from that as much as possible, and I would prefer to just have three S ranks, since again, S ranks are always better than A and B ranks. Something I'll demonstrate here, since this is the end game mode, is during a boss fight, A rank characters usually won't even be capable of dealing damage. Usually it's completely up to the S rank characters, and if both of them die, you're gonna have to start again. You can see here, one she has slightly more BP than Plume. However, Plume's gonna be the one doing all the damage. We'll start off with one she, and I'll show you how he can't damage the boss. As you can see, the boss literally heals faster than he can damage. Even with some help from QTE, he's just not putting out any damage. Whereas if we swap to someone like Plume, And you can see the boss's HP actually going down. Then we have Chrome, who is also good enough to make the boss's HP go down. Now unfortunately that's just how the game works. Anything that's free is obviously not going to be as good as anything you can pay hundreds of dollars for. However, that doesn't mean you shouldn't play these characters and you can't enjoy them. It just means that if you're after the easiest time in in-game content, then you'll want to play Metal. I personally know many people who would rather play an A rank and meld a little bit more because they're having a much more fun time playing with that construct on their team than a meta character. And at the end of the day, that's what PGR and all games should be about in general. Having fun. Something that was fun for me was proving that Lotus could be perfectly viable and usable. Is it a bit more effort? Yeah, but hey, it was fun because I made her kit work. So I think the take home message for this is it's up to you to decide what's fun and what's balanced for you. We have the whale side where the game is too easy and then we have the free to play side where the game is really hard and you have to meld really hard, but you can clear the content. If you want to see an example of this, there's this crazy mad lad Proto, who I'll link below, and he plays the whole game free to play. He clears all the end game content, including Norman 6, for those of you who don't know what that is. It's this mode over here, which you can see I haven't even unlocked. Usually I can clear Norman 5, but 6 is something that I'll never meld for. But at that point for me, the game's not really fun, and it's more just about perseverance. So I don't personally play that level of end game content. If that's what you enjoy, then go for it. Prove to everyone that it can be done. While Proto's skills are absolutely amazing and his level of patience is godly, a lot of his matches are long and drawn out, and it takes quite a while to clear the content, not due to a lack of skill, but due to a lack of damage on his account. Then you have the other extreme, which is Wales, where everything dies as soon as you touch it and the game's over before it began, which is also, in my opinion, not very fun. And at the end of the day, that's why I make these guides, so that people can have fun. So if you ever see me doing something funny, like leveling up Lotus to max, usually it's because I've tested it, I've done the numbers, and I'm pretty confident that it can work for what I'm trying to achieve. If you're into that, you can check out some of my tests and experiments over here. 
or usually I'll do them live over on my Twitch. Hopefully this compact but in-depth guide has summarized all you need to know to confidently make a decision. If you're looking for your next PGR guide, you can check it out here.